Hi everyone, my name is Daniel Cox. I'm a private chef here in Bozeman and Big Sky, Montana. And I'm super excited to be here today, partnering with DeBrucker's Charlet Beef to bring you a series of tutorials on how to cook this delicious Charlet Beef. Today, we'll be cooking the perfect smash burger using garlic aioli, tart cherry, and bacon jam. I'm gonna teach you how to make these recipes at your home, and I'm super excited to be here. Stay with us. The first thing we're gonna be preparing today is a tart cherry and bacon jam. We wanna start with one pound of sliced bacon. And we're gonna render that down until it's perfectly crispy. Doesn't that smell good? So while that bacon is rendering on the stove top, we're gonna to put together a garlic aioli. Making mayonnaise or aioli at home is so easy. All it is is an emulsion of egg yolk, oil, and some kind of acid, whether it be vinegar or lemon juice. In this situation, we're gonna use egg yolks, we're gonna use garlic, whole cloves of garlic. We're gonna use the juice of one lemon. Fresh lemon over the jars of lemon, ideally. It's gonna give you more acid and a lot more flavor. Salt. And Dijon mustard. Again, the recipes I've included with this video. To make the aioli, we're gonna blend the egg yolks, the garlic, the lemon, the salt, and the mustard for about 30 seconds. We want the egg yolk, the garlic, the lemon to really break down before we start to slowly emulsify the oil. In this recipe is one cup of oil. I like to use a blend of avocado and olive oil. If you use full olive oil, it's gonna be a little bit bitter. Some people like it. I prefer a blend of a base neutral oil, like canola, vegetable, in this case avocado, mixed with olive oil. So once that's broken down, we're gonna slowly start emulsifying the oil. And that's all a mayonnaise is, you guys. Egg yolk, some kind of acid, whether it be vinegar or lemon, and olive oil. So the reason that you wanna slowly emulsify that oil into the egg yolks is so that you get this creamy consistency of that aioli, which to be honest, is just a fancy word for mayonnaise. But we got lemon juice, garlic, Dijon mustard in there. It's gonna complement the burger so well. And why buy it from the store when you can make it from scratch? I mean, look how creamy that is. And the only way you get that is to slowly emulsify that oil. That's the technique. If you walk away from anything today, is the technique of slowly emulsifying the oil into the egg yolk to create that kind of creamy consistency. Look how beautiful that is. And it's gonna go perfect on a burger. And sometimes an egg yolk is bigger or smaller. You might need to add a, another egg yolk if you have small eggs, or if you have those jumbo big eggs, you might need to tone it down to one egg yolk. But hit it with a splash of water if it needs to be loosened up a little bit. Play with it, but you want it to be loose enough to go on that burger. So we wanna slowly bring this bacon down to where each piece is crispy, the fat has rendered. You can see all the fat in the pan there. We're gonna discard most of this fat because in this application, we don't want it to be greasy. We're gonna take this bacon, we're gonna strain it on some paper towels. We're gonna reserve just a little bit of the bacon fat to saute the onions and the garlic. So right now what I'm gonna do is take this bacon and get it out onto some paper towels. reserving two, three tablespoons of that bacon fat for some chopped onion. And this is where the flavor really starts to build. So the rosemary salt is what we're gonna season the JoJo's with and the beef when we go to make the smash burgers. It's a blend of salt, pepper, smoked paprika, garlic powder. And in this case, we're gonna chop fresh rosemary using that salt as an abrasive on the cutting board to really break down the rosemary, get it very fine, but also draw the oils out. Once this is done, you chop that rosemary, you marry it all together. You can keep this in your pantry for a week, two weeks. That rosemary is just gonna get better and better and you can season basically anything with it. All right, so one more time right here, we've got salt, black pepper, smoked paprika and garlic powder mixed with that fresh chopped rosemary. I mean, come on, this is gonna make everything taste delicious, especially 
our smash burgers, and our oven baked JoJo's. So once that bacon's fully rendered and got crispy bits in there, we're gonna pull it out, strain it onto some paper towels, and we're gonna add in chopped onion, some sliced garlic. Now when using garlic, you wanna take that butt off, the stem piece, and for this application, we're just gonna slice it. We're not gonna worry about mincing it. We're not gonna press it through any garlic presses. We're gonna give it a quick slice, but not using those butt ends. I don't know if butt end is a culinary term or not, but I think you understand what I mean. So sliced garlic, some onion. We're gonna sweat all that down. When I say sweat, I mean we're gonna cook it till it's translucent and, and fragrant. So we're gonna take this garlic, we're gonna throw it into that pan with a little bit of that bacon fat. And we're gonna let that cook for five to seven minutes. All right, so once those onions and those garlic have kind of got a little bit of color on them, they've sweated down, they're getting translucent color, they also smell really fragrant. We're gonna, what's called deglaze the pan. So to deglaze the pan, you wanna use liquid, sometimes wine, sometimes water, sometimes stock. In this situation, we're gonna use organic tart cherry concentrate. You can find this at the grocery store. And what we're gonna do is pour that in so that it gets all those little brown bacon bits that are stuck to the bottom of the pan and scrapes them up and it's flavored. We're gonna add in some brown sugar, red pepper flakes, bay leaves, and then one sprig of rosemary. And we're gonna go in with unsweetened tart cherries. I found these in the bulk section of my grocery store, but you can also use other fruits. You could use figs, you could use cranberries. In this situation, tart cherries and bacon go really well together. We're gonna to add that in. And now, what we're gonna do over low heat, I'd say low, medium heat, we're gonna cover that, and we're gonna let that go for one to two hours. So the next thing I wanna show you guys how to make is oven roasted Jojo potatoes. So kind of a steak fry, it's a wedge potato. Depending on the size, we're gonna cut this into six, four to six pieces. So this size potato, I'm gonna cut into six pieces. We're gonna just break this down into wedges. This is just a technique that I think every home cook should know, and it's the blanching or boiling of the potato just till it's 80% of the way done, and then we're gonna take it into a really hot oven to, make, to brown them up. But basically what we're gonna do is take these potatoes, cut them into four to six pieces depending on the size. These are medium size Yukon Gold potatoes. If you have a larger potato, use your best judgment. You might wanna cut it into eight pieces. But for a medium sized Yukon Gold potato, four to six pieces is gonna work just fine. So once you have your potatoes cut into wedges, basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna put them into cold water. The reason why we do this is to get some of that outside starch off but it's also gonna cook the potato a little bit more evenly than just dropping them into hot water. And if you drop them into hot water, what's gonna happen is the outside potato is gonna cook before the core gets cooked. You're gonna end up with a mushy fry or a mushy Jojo. We're gonna take these, get them into cold water and get them on the stove top. Make sure to season that water with one or two tablespoons of salt. The more you can season as you go, the better your fry is gonna be. So right here, we got the tart cherry bacon jam. Take that lid off. You're just hit with the smells of the bay leaf, the rosemary, the, the, the cherries, but check this out. So right around here, when it's about halfway, that, that liquid is reduced. We're gonna take this bacon that we strained, we crisped up earlier. We're gonna take this bacon, we're gonna put it back in. We want those flavors to really marry together, to really meld together, and have time to come together as one cohesive sauce. There's still a lot of liquid left in the bottom of this pan. We want to take this over low heat for about another hour. Cover it up. So this tart cherry and bacon jam has been cooking for about an hour and a half. You can see that the liquid is down to just a couple of tablespoons. The sugar in that liquid will help when you cool it off. It's gonna kind of bring it together into more of a sauce consistency, but this is getting really close. We want to put it on the burger hot. So if you make this ahead of time, cool it in your fridge, and then just pull out what you need for your burgers. You, this will live in your fridge for a week. What we're gonna do is we're gonna let this go for 20 or 30 more minutes. We want that liquid to be almost completely reduced so that it feels like a jam. It has a little bit of a sticky texture to it, and it's gonna go perfect on that smash burger. Look how good that looks. 
This is almost done. We're gonna put that lid on for about 20 more minutes. Let it do its thing. So this tart cherry and bacon jam, it's been cooking down for close to two hours. We want that liquid to just about be gone. You see there in the bottom of the pan, there's hardly any liquid there. That means that all of that tart cherry juice, the onion juices, the garlic, all that flavor is soaked up into those dried, unsweetened tart cherries. And what you're left with is gonna be just a flavor bomb on that burger. So we're gonna get this into a bowl here. We're gonna pick out the rosemary and the bay leaves because that's not exactly the best of eating. And we're gonna put this down to cool. Like I said before, you wanna serve this on your burger hot. So if you're not eating this right away, you can put it in your fridge and then just heat up what you're using as you go. Look how good that looks though. And we're gonna go through, we're gonna pick out all those bay leaves and all that rosemary. But this is gonna add such a tart, smoky, and salty element to that burger. There's also red chili flakes in here, which adds a little bit of kick. Overall, you're gonna get a lot of flavor out of this tart cherry and bacon jam. So once your potatoes have cooked for five to six minutes, they should be about 80% of the way done. You can check it with a toothpick to make sure, or just throw it on your cutting board, cut it and eat it. It should be still a little al dente, but I'm gonna put it on a rack like this so that the steam helps to dry it out. And now, the biggest trick or hack that I wish you would walk away with today is to preheat your sheet tray. So I have my oven on at 450. If you want, you can do 500 degrees. You want high temperature and you want to preheat your sheet tray in that oven. We're gonna let the oven and the sheet tray come up to 450 to 500 degrees. We're gonna oil the potatoes with the rosemary salt and we're gonna pour those potatoes on the hot sheet tray so you get that sizzle and you get that sear that you would want in a Jojo potato. Blanched or boiled, these Jojo potatoes for five to six minutes, they're about 80% of the way cooked. We strained them out, we laid them in a single layer so that the steam would help dry the outside so that when it goes in the oven, it gets color instead of steaming in the oven because of all the moisture. So basically we're gonna take these, put them into a bowl. We have our sheet tray preheating in the oven. We're gonna take those Jojo potatoes, a little bit of olive oil, a little bit of that rosemary salt that we made earlier. Don't over season them. You can always add more salt afterwards, but you can't take it away. Olive oil, rosemary salt, give them a quick toss. They're not falling apart in the bowl because we cooked them perfectly for five to six minutes. Once they're seasoned up, I'm gonna grab that hot sheet tray. It's been in the oven, preheating with the oven at 450 degrees. And we're gonna go, you hear that sizzle? That's what you want. That's gonna help get a sear on that potato so it doesn't steam in the oven, but it sears in the oven. Instantly, it smells amazing. I have those cooking for about eight to 10 minutes. I included the recipe attached to this video. So the reason I love smash burgers as much as I do, it kind of has that diner, drive-in, fast food burger feel. Obviously we have a lot of gourmet ingredients here, the tart cherry bacon jam, the scratch made uh, garlic aioli. I took DeBrucker's ground beef and I balled them into four ounce pieces. We want a four, three or four ounce ball here so that when we smash it out, it becomes thin and that surface area crisps up on the cast iron skillet. I have a locally made here in Bozeman brioche bun. And we're gonna walk through how to make these smash burgers. So we're gonna take these four ounce DeBrucker ground beef patties. Basically the technique of making the perfect smash burger is you can either use a press. I got this off of Amazon, 14, 15 bucks. We're gonna put those balls down, season them up with a little bit of rosemary salt that we made earlier. And we're gonna get a little bit of oil on that press and press it out. And then those are gonna crisp up perfectly 
on this hot cast iron skillet. If you don't have a press, you can use a spatula like this and just press it out in the cast iron skillet or in the pan that you're using. Both work just fine. That rosemary salt though immediately hits you. That fresh rosemary, if you can avoid it, don't use dried rosemary, but that fresh rosemary immediately hits you. Incredibly fragrant. So on any burger, you can use whatever type of cheese you want. For me, creating the perfect smash burger includes American cheese. But you could also use white cheddar, gouda, pepper jack, whatever you like on your burger. What I like about American cheese is that it doesn't break, it doesn't separate. So the perfect smash burger, before we flip it onto that second side, we're gonna do a little bit of Dijon mustard. What this is called is a mustard fried burger. And some shaved onion. And we're gonna give those a flip. Immediately you get hit with the smell of that mustard, the smell of that rosemary salt, the fragrance that's coming off of those onions. We're gonna go with a slice of American cheese. We're gonna let those cook for an additional four minutes and we'll be eating some burgers. So the reason that we wanna preheat our sheet tray is that so you get a nice crust on those Jojos. Look at those. So we cooked them, we cooked them in water until they're about 80% of the way cooked. We put it down on a seared sheet tray. That's why we do that right there so you get that nice sear on that potato. These look absolutely perfect. And the smell of that rosemary salt, is killer. What I like to do is take this bun, as those burgers are finishing up, move them to the side. Take this bun, cook it cut side down, right there in a little bit of that beef juice. What I love about Charlet beef, it's about 80, 20% ground beef, but it's rich. It's got so much good beef flavor, and that's why Charlet beef is so unique. We're gonna take those buns, put them down, and we're gonna give those buns a little smash as well. We want to really get those warmed through and get a nice crisp on that cut side. Give them a little smash though so it kind of helps them along. So now that we got a good toast on those brioche buns, we've kind of smashed them out, they're warmed all the way through, we're going to assemble this burger. Go down with that bottom bun. We're going to give it a little bit of that homemade garlic aioli. Aioli both sides of the bun. You want it to be nice and saucy and bring so much flavor with that fresh garlic, the lemon juice. We're gonna go down with double patty, smash burger, American cheese. And then we're gonna give it some of that tart cherry and bacon jam. This is really what sets this burger off. Every single step of this process is important. The smashing of the burger, caramelizing that, that patty itself. But this tart cherry and bacon jam, for me, is really what's gonna set this burger off. We're gonna get this nice toasted top bun, a little bit more of that aioli. Right on top. For me, that's the perfect smash burger. See that crispy, the crispy bits right there, the crispy cheese, the crispy onion. That's why smash burgers are so killer, is because you get that crispiness that's just so flavorful, so juicy. But the burger is still, the burger is still cooked properly. It's gonna be medium, medium well. If you like it more, keep it on the griddle more. But either way, cooking it hard and fast like that is gonna give you texture, crispiness, and it's gonna just be an overall juicy burger. All right, now the part that I enjoy the most, I'm gonna actually try the burger. The reason why I love Charlet beef as much as I do, it's rich. While the beef is 80-20, good fat content, the fat that it does have is just, it's so flavorful, got great beef flavor. It truly is some of the best beef as a chef that I've ever had. Tart cherry and bacon jam, American cheese, garlic aioli, Get it. For me, it's as good as it gets.